Hey guys, I'm Nick and today I want to share with you some really really cool feature I discovered in Octane Render that basically keeps all the beauty of path tracing but it's actually a direct lighting and can potentially decrease your render times by two or three or even four times. First of all, I will share what you guys created following my tutorials. And here we have this really crazy pattern by Pablo and I really like the lighting, I don't know if it's lighting or material, this reddish colors and it really makes that pattern to feel like, I don't know, it's kind of like cells in, in our body and how they breathe, maybe. but yeah, it's, it's an interesting result, I really love the depth of field here and if you want to recreate this effect, in the top right corner there will be an annotation, click on that and you can check how to create something like this. Pablo did awesome work, 10 out of 10. So let me show you first of all how my path tracing preset looks like. So normally here you can see that I'm using around 1000 samples, diffuse, specular and scatter depth all set to 8. Somehow I figured out that using 6 or 5 or 3 uh, for these depth uh, values can give you some some flakening or some noise, especially when you apply a denoiser on top of this noise, it gives you really, you know, that flickery flakes result. So uh, Ray Epson filter size, those are default, uh, GI clamp is set to 10 and uh, yeah, I, I love to also increase parallel samples and max style samples, those give me around I don't know, 3 to 5 to maybe even 10 seconds boost um, in a render time, but um, be aware that this one eats your RAM, like VRAM, very, very fast. And adaptive sampling, to be honest, still figuring out, but just ticking this checkbox here will already make your renders faster. Uh, let me show you how it looks and how much time it takes to render out this frame using path tracing kernel in Octane. Here we see that half HD, it's basically half 960 by 540, I think, renders out in around 35 seconds. If we add a denoiser, it will be 36, but yeah, denoising takes around, I don't know, 2 or 3 seconds. But uh, yeah, we're using that setup you just saw, and it takes around 35 seconds. Now let's do a comparison between how this looks like in comparison with your direct lighting with the default settings. B is our path tracing and A is our direct lighting. We see that we have harsh shadows, um, also the <laughs> subsurface material is completely destroyed, but it's not looking that bad. But let me show you just one single trick that can potentially give you the very very close to path tracing result, but still maintain that low time to render. So let's open up the kernel the octane settings and we see that max samples obviously 128 samples are too low i mean for animation i usually still do around 500 maybe for static frame let's do 300 and gi mode is really important so by default is here a gi ambient occlusion and if i set it to be gi none you see that there are no light bounces calculated in the lighting the scene. So GI ambient occlusion actually calculates an ambient occlusion around the scene. And what we will be using is GI diffuse. And GI diffuse in a mix between path tracing and ambient occlusion. It costs a bit more to render, but still it's super super cool to use. So you see that we are just the subsurf subsurface scattering material still doesn't work, but we can fix that by increasing the specular depths and also we will be modifying our subsurface material but just a tiny bit so in specular depths let's set it to be around like eight so it has its color but it's it's still too dark i don't know it's it doesn't look it doesn't grab your attention as it does in path tracing so glossy depth add a bit so let's say five and for the diffuse depth you know if i set it to be zero or one you see that we are losing the illumination here, but let's set it to be two, maybe three. 
I think three or actually if we take it up to the five, that's basically that that's a good idea how to um, set these values here. Basically just start with a one, then on two, on three, four, I think, yeah, four is is a good one. And uh, when you don't see any differences, let's say we right now we have four, let's say five, actually no difference. So let's set it to be four. AO distance. We don't need it to be 3, let's set it to 1. Basically, the larger the scene is, uh, the greater value of AO distance should be. In terms of the background, I think we are super close to pass tracing and as you can see here, it just takes 11 seconds to render. But here, when we check our subsurface material, it doesn't look good at all. So, what I did is I modified the subsurface material and I will show you the result. So this is how I add subsurface material and you can see that it's basically the same one. We still have, you know, it's you, you cannot trick the physics in the rendering engine and uh, that's why we still in a patch tracing we have this great looking color in the upper corner, you know, it's a bit too darker. It is a bit more realistic, but to my opinion, it looks good. It looks still believable, it still looks realistic. Only thing that I changed to make it like this saturated orangey amber color. Uh, let me show you. So we have rough pass tracing and rough direct light. So this is what I've used. And I want to show you a cool trick. Because in many projects you will find that direct lighting kernel cannot calculate the light coming through the subsurface materials, like specular materials, as efficient and as beautiful as fast tracing does. So this is how it looked like before modification to this material, so it looks dark. You can't really feel the, the glassy texture, it's more like a very very dense beeswax or something like that. So here in scattering medium there is an option to plug an emission and I actually applied the texture emission and now we kind of emulated that light coming through the glass surface and glass bottle of fragrance and in the gradient you can see that I'm using really really dark values but actually this value is very, very dark red color which means this area in path tracing it's calculated naturally because this is a wooden block and uh, it's kind of you can see through the glass but here in direct lighting it's not prominent and that's why I set it uh, in the emission channel and uh, this one is just a, your like primary orange color of the bottle and uh, texture emission is just set to be really low, we don't need any overkills. Here is basically a good visualization on how I use this gradient to create different colors. So yeah, this is how you can speed the render times. In this case, it's clearly around two times faster, because remember for past tracing we got around 35 seconds for this half HD, and now we have just 14, maybe 15, for if the noiser is turned on. Let me show you another project here. Um, here. I have set this room and let me show you how pass tracing looks like. So what I have here is this uh, really minimal room setup. Um, it has its, you know, its dreamy look and we all love Octane for, for that. But you can see that even with the, the, the presets here is just 600 samples, 8, eight for all the depth. Um, yeah all the other jazz maybe of the sample count um, the parallel and tile samples and uh, still it takes a bit of time to to render for example this uh, frame will be rendering for around one minute and 20 seconds or one minute like above one minute and now let's change this one to the direct lighting setup so here i actually haven't modified any of these materials Take the camera settings and I will show you here but essentially let me show you the settings we are using here so diffuse depths um, I think we still need it to be around four glossy depths around five max samples here we can even decrease it to be 300 and GI mode set to GI diffuse because uh, look if I 
set it to be GI ambient occlusion, you can see that we don't have the enough light and increasing these depths won't get you anywhere. You will need to kind of add artificial lights to compensate the scene. But again, GI diffuse is your best friend. <laughs> Here you can also see that in this area it looks a bit more dark and yeah, that's why those are different kernels. But still, I think I think that this render still is great. It's looking good, especially if then tweaked a bit in post processing. But yeah, there are just a few areas that are darker and you can just decrease the shadow density. So uh, yeah, look at that. So I think it looks even better, you know, maybe that's because this one is not. But once again, this A on the left, it's direct lighting that is rendered just for in 31 seconds. And the pass tracing was over a minute. And I think direct lighting is doing a really, really good job. Now also, let's take a look at my coral pack. It's a pack of 18 corals. Uh, procedurally grown all the alembic files i did a video about it somewhere now there will be a pop-up you can click on that and also a link to download this asset pack is in the description it's a great way to support my channel if you like these tutorials and now let me show you what's going on here because this one is also a bit of complicated because right now you can see that there's a concrete material and also a specular material and as you may understand by this first example the the fragrance bottle direct lighting doesn't uh, doesn't like the the subsurface the specular materials but still let's do a comparison and I, I will I will show you what I've done to achieve nearly similar results between path tracing and direct lighting so this kernel uses 500 samples GI mode set to GI diffuse specular depth set to 8 because there are many many great uh, specular things and uh, diffuse depth set to 8 glossy depth set to 3 AO distance set to 3 um, that's yeah that's basically it so let me show you how I modified it to look really really good here you can see that with the past tracing and you see have this bluish overlay but it, it kind of you, you can see it here when we are comparing these two um, I will try to get as close as possible and in this example I'm using only the camera imager so what I did I tweaked the exposure and the gamma to the point that they nearly match so you see tweaking the gamma actually it could be like this maybe the only difference is that bluish overlay but the good thing is that it can be easily implemented in let's say photoshop or affinity designer or i don't know any any sort of photo manipulation tools you see that we are still getting all the shadows and all the details of this coral so it's here it's even a bit more bluish maybe we can turn our white point few percents up yeah i think i think there still need to be an overlay placed but here you can see it only takes seconds and if we set it to be past tracing it takes around 40 seconds so basically that's how you can cut your render times at least in half but again there were projects that it was cut by two or three or even four times I really hope that this little trick will boost your render times and you will be rendering your beautiful animations and stills much faster. Alright guys, all right guys, that's all. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope that this little trick will make your render times a lot faster. And if you enjoyed this video and you want more of them, please let me know in the comments if there are any specific topics you want me to cover. I read all of your comments and reply to all of them and try my best to provide valuable content. Subscribe to my channel, leave a like to this video and I will back next Tuesday. Bye!